The read host commandlet in PowerShell just gets input from some user so that you can use that in your program if you're writing a script. By itself, it doesn't really mean a lot unless you save it into a variable, but let's just do it by itself first. Read host, not red host, read host, <laughs> let's try that again, and it has two parameters. One is the prompt parameter, and the other is as secure string parameter. Let's take the prompt parameter first. The prompt parameter is simply what the prompt is going to be. Enter your first name, we'll say. Now, I don't really need the word prompt here because this is a positional parameter. So we'll take it out. And let's run this. It says, enter your first name. So let's enter my first name. And it just spits it right back out at me. Now, this isn't very useful. I could supposedly put this into a pipeline somewhere, but read host, uh, the parameters don't really take any pipelines, so uh, you'd have to uh, go through some tricks to make that happen. So why don't we just save this then to a variable? Whoops, let's try that again. I'll save it to a variable first name and I will say equals read host enter your first name now if I enter my first name it doesn't actually spit anything back out but it has stored it in this variable sure enough when I type first name it shows my name so first name has my name in it now it uh, this the read host does have another um, one other parameter and that is as secure string and this is a little deeper than we really need to go in this course I'm going to show it to you briefly but I'm not expecting you to remember all of this so let's go back and do our command again first name read host enter your first name but this time we're going to turn on this switch parameter as secure string. Enter your first name. Well, now when I type it, it's showing asterisks. And I'll click enter. And again, it doesn't show it to me, but let's see what first name looks like. System security secure string. What's going on here? Well, it's encrypting my first name. It's actually encrypted inside of the PowerShell. Actually, it's in RAM right now uh, in PowerShell. Now, that doesn't do me very much good if I want to save that first name. And this, gets, this is where it starts to get really quite a bit deeper than what I really care to, uh, to get into. I want to show it to you, though, just because I know there are going to be questions about it. So how would I get this thing? Well, what I would do would be to make another variable and I've been hitting four lately instead of dollar sign not clicking the shift key and I'm going to say secure first name equals first name and then I'm going to pipe this first name to convert from secure string and let's see what happens well it didn't look like it did anything but let's look at the contents of secure first name oh look at that it's still encrypted but now it's it's encrypted with something it can return something that I can actually use I can use this in a pipeline or I can store it somewhere and if I want to um, secure this again I can simply do this first name and then I'll say equal uh, secure first name again I did it once again And then pipe that to convert to secure string. 
and now it has put it back in memory. Uh, again, this is still encrypted. If I type that, I don't get anything back. But first, uh, that's because I mistyped it. That's why I didn't get anything back. There we go. I get secure string back again. And that's because first name contains secure string, but only in memory. Whereas the secure first string uh, is now the variable that I would use if I actually want to use this information somewhere.